Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be taking you through the structure and function of alpha glucose, beta glucose and their polysaccharides, glycogen, starch and cellulose. Now get out those colour pens because there is lots of drawing in this. Lots of things that build up and their functions for you to remember. To help you remember all of those over on the site, there are a load of multiple choice questions just waiting for you. There are two different isomers of glucose, alpha glucose and beta glucose. You need to know how to draw these and the differences between these. For more details on the specific differences between these, you can go and watch the individual video on that. You can see the difference is over on the right hand side with the spatial arrangement of the hydrogen and the OH group. And this different arrangement in space, the different positioning of that hydrogen and the OH group will give rise to different polymers of alpha and beta glucose. Here we have two monomers of alpha glucose. When these join together in a condensation reaction, water will be lost. The bond in the middle will be a glycosidic bond, joining the two monomers of alpha glucose together. When we have two monomers of alpha glucose joining together, they will form the disaccharide maltose. When lots of monomers of alpha glucose join together, the polymer, the polysaccharide starch is formed. There are two forms of starch, amylose, which is long chains without branches. This forms coils, making it really compact. The other form is amylopectin. The key difference is that while they are long chain steel, they have branches, so it cannot coil. To help us understand this, we need to look more detail at the arrangement of the oxygen and the hydrogens, the ones that we don't normally draw in. These are important for forming the helix structure of amylose. It is held together by hydrogen bonding between the hydrogens and the oxygens of the OH group. Starch is found in plants and is a way of storing energy that a plant needs later on. For growing, it can be stored in seeds or tubers. Starch is insoluble, so it is not going to affect osmosis. This also means that it cannot diffuse out of the cells. The bond between each alpha glucose monomer is a glycosidic bond. And these glycosidic bonds can be broken by a hydrolysis reaction. A hydrolysis reaction, hydrolysis, is where water is added to break something. A monomer of alpha glucose can easily and quickly be separated from starch. So that glucose is quickly and readily available when it is required. Amylopectin is the heavily branched version of starch. This allows it to be broken down in multiple different locations at once. Giving any enzyme that's breaking it down multiple access points. It means that more than one alpha glucose monomer can be released at a time. It can be broken down faster and quickly when energy is required. Glycogen is heavily branched and to get those branches we need to look at a slightly different part of the molecule and how it joins up not in a straight line. We are going to get the same condensation reaction, 
the same glycosidic bond being formed, but it is no longer in a straight line. It is forming a branch here. The chains and the branches are going to be shorter than in starch, but there are going to be more overall branches. Glycogen is found in animal and bacterial cells, as opposed to starch, which is found in plant cells. It is stored in smaller amounts in muscle smells and within the liver. It can be used as a store of energy, but more frequently animals will use fat to store energy. The highly branched structure means that there are lots of access points for an enzyme, so it can be broken down quickly, easily and readily when energy is needed. Like starch, it is also insoluble, so it will have no effect on osmosis and cannot diffuse out of cells. Glycogen and starch are polymers of alpha glucose, but there is the second isomer, beta glucose, which also forms polymers. Monomers of beta-glucose will polymerize to form cellulose. In cellulose, alternate beta-glucose monomers are flipped upside down, as you can see in the drawing here. This is the bottom where he is at the top. They still join together with a condensation reaction, resulting in a glycosidic bond in exactly the same mechanism of alpha glucose. But because here, the different spatial arrangement of the hydrogen and the OH means we need to flip that so that the OHs are next to each other for the formation of the bond. In any condensation reaction, we will be losing water. Water will be released as the glycosidic bond is formed. Cellulose forms long unbranched chains. Multiple chains can join together. Cross-linked together via the hydrogen bonding via the OH groups. While individual hydrogen bonds are weak on their own, the large number of hydrogen bonds, the large number of cross-links, that can be seen between the chains of cellulose, overall makes them very strong. All of these collectively together will form microfibrils. The structure of cellulose means that the fibres it forms are very strong, giving them an important function within the cell walls. They prevent the cell from bursting. If it gets too full of water and maintaining the turgid shape of the cells. You need to remember lots of different things about starch, glycogen and cellulose. For starch, the monomer is alpha glucose. For glycogen, the monomer is alpha glucose. And for cellulose, the monomer is beta glucose. The structure of starch is helical with some branches. The structure of glycogen is heavily branched, whereas the structure of cellulose is in parallel chains which are cross-linked. Starch can be used as a store of energy, as can glycogen, whereas cellulose is more structural in cell walls. Starch is found in plants, glycogen is found in animal and bacterial cells, and cellulose is found in plant cells. Ow!
Ouch. This is why in some videos I have had explained scratches.